Meanwhile, Martin began working on the musical New York, New York. New York, New York, these vagabond shoes. A $14 million budget, complete creative freedom, and filming before even finishing the script. A credit of trust which Scorsese had never even dreamed of. Unfortunately, this coincided with probably the worst period of his life. Cocaine replaced his first love. Not to mention that he had started an affair with his lead actress, Liza Minnelli, while his pregnant wife, Julia Cameron, waited for him at home. I know that. The filming process fell apart almost as soon as it started. Scorsese was incapable of managing the set and the actors. A fight scene from the movie landed De Niro, Minnelli, and the director in the emergency room. Don't you hear me? Don't I don't you care. Hear me? Now I'll get you. Well, I'll you. Later, Martin made 150 extras in costume wait for him while he finished a talk with his psychoanalyst. I started playing with drugs when I was doing New York, New York. For me, it was just the beginning of going into an abyss for about two years and coming out of it just barely alive. The actor's improvisation, which he loved so, resulted in almost all of the material besides the musical numbers being comprised of disjointed dialogue. Number one, number three, and number two. No, wait. No, no, wait. I'm, now I'm getting confused. This made the editing process hell, since there were hundreds of scenes with no obvious connection. Sometimes you really are hard to understand. You really are. You are hard to understand. Don't change the subject. De Niro learned to play the saxophone and mustered all the talent he could, but saw that the picture was heading towards disaster anyways. Scorsese stopped hearing criticism, rejected all advice, and allowed Liza Minnelli to rewrite the script as she saw fit. What are you talking about? You just ruined it for me. The result was a two and a half hour of chaos, which the director dubbed the first noir musical in history. The studio was counting on a traditional 40s style reel, happy and light, but got a dark drama which would be the worst flop of the year. New York, New York did not make even 50% of its budget, and Martin spiraled into depression. He broke up with Liza, and soon after Julia gave birth to their daughter Dominica, he left his family and found comfort in his only remaining love, cocaine. The next two years were a fog. Having brought the documentary The Last Waltz to Cannes, Martin ordered cocaine from Paris by private plane and told journalists, no cocaine, no interview. And though the musical documentary In the Spirit of Woodstock was a masterpiece, Scorsese, who didn't even accept a dime to shoot it, was the object of great concern among those close to him. I was always angry, throwing glasses, provoking people, really unpleasant to be around. I always found no matter what anybody said, something to take offense at. I'd be the host, but at some point during the evening I'd flip out, just like when I'm shooting. For over half a year, Martin's friend Mardrick worked on the screenplay for Raging Bull, but the director didn't even read it. In the end, he suggested sending it to Paul Schrader for finishing touches, who decided to rewrite it completely. When he finished, the taxi driver author saw that all of the characters seemed loathsome, and there wasn't enough humanity in the material. I don't know you. Listen, I'm going to ask you something. Were you with the Copa with him, huh? Huh? Were you with the Copa, huh? However, Scorsese was wasting his life and fed the producer lies about how production was just about to start. He had no desire to shoot a sports drama. Plus, he was finally able to get the rights of one of his favorite novels, The Gangs of New York. But not a single studio wanted to finance such a huge project, especially without a script. Disillusioned, he traveled around the country with his new girlfriend, the young actress Isabella Rossellini. At premieres and parties, he would pester people with his haughtiness and drug-induced rambling. All the work he'd done on Raging Bull, which was one little test take with Robert in the ring, Martin took to Michael Chapman. To make sure it was different from Rocky stylistically, they decided to film in black and white. It was an important detail, but not very productive for eight months of preparation. His love story with cocaine finally ended beginning with the Telluride Film Festival. Martin bought some cheap local product, and an hour later had a fit and started bleeding from his throat. When he returned to New York, he collapsed and was hospitalized. Because he was constantly mixing asthma meds, antidepressants, and cocaine, the director had almost no platelets left. Rosalini had to leave for a shoot in Italy and was sure that she was seeing her emaciated 100-pound fiancé for the last time. However, the doctors helped him, and he watched films all day in the hospital, 
which reminded him of his first most important addiction. One day, De Niro came to visit him and told him everything on his mind. Perhaps it was the talk which saved Scorsese. What's the matter with you, Marty? Don't you want to live to see if your daughter is going to grow up and get married? Are you going to be one of those flash-in-the-pan directors who does a couple of good movies and it's over for them? You know, we can make this picture. We can really do a great job. Are we going to do it or not? At that point, United Artists Studio had already given up on Schrader's screenplay and was ready to dump the project. After Rocky, a gloomy drama without a heroic character would have attracted only a crazy producer. Martin and Robert decided to rewrite the text themselves. They went to St. Martin's, where De Niro took care of his exhausted friend as though he was his nurse. He helped him to kick his habit and write a work of genius. After 14 days, the studio accepted the script. A few times a week, they met with the prototype. Jake LaMotta was unpredictably explosive and moody and surprised him with his nasty personality. Once in Martin's hotel room, Jake jumped up and started banging his head against the wall. That day, De Niro realized how to play his character. The rage of the boxer was caused by partial deafness, which meant he had to always ask someone to repeat themselves, and this triggered his anger at the drop of a hat. Shut up! Shut up! I'll fucking take care of you later! Shut up! Later, the actor sparred with LaMotta over a thousand times, then participated in an amateur tournament and won two of three fights. While Robert was consumed with preparations for the long-awaited film, Martin was consumed with fear. After the failure of the musical, he thought that this was his last chance in the film industry. Only one thought helped him conquer his anxiety. I'll film it so that I have no regrets. The director immediately started to make his dreams a reality. Despite the producer's preferences, he chose Joe Pesci for the role of Joey. Why don't you do me a favor, huh? Do something for me. Just put your hands up. I want to show you something. Put your hands up. The actor had impressed him with his work on the film Family Enforcer, which is why Martin wanted to work with him. This is just the beginning. Since he thought the end of his career was nigh, he wanted to do it. You understand? If you win, you win. If you lose, you still win. Scorsese chose Kathy Moriarty after an open casting call. The actress debuted in Raging Bull. You sucked his cock. Yeah, I sucked his cock and everybody else on the fucking street too. What do you want? You're nothing but a fat pig, selfish fool. Fast forwarding a little, Moriarty and Pesci were both nominated for an Oscar for their roles. But in the spring of 79, no one was thinking about Oscar victories. On set, the director behaved as though he was the main hero of the picture. He threw tantrums and argued with Chapman so fiercely that chairs flew. The cinematographer perfectly depicted the blood and the oversized ring created a feeling of loneliness and futility. The team worked until every idea was perfectly implemented. This is how five weeks dedicated to filming the fight turned into ten, even though the result was six minutes of screen time. Unlike other popular films about boxing, the camera was placed inside the ring for the first time. This forced the cameraman to rehearse no less than the actors. Even the opening scene is like a stunt. Chapman ran behind the scenes and detonated dozens of bulbs to imitate the crowd of journalists. The last fight scene was modeled after the storyboard from the shower scene in Psycho. That is where the director took the pace and rapidly changing frames because he believed that to be one of the scariest scenes in the history of film a feeling he tried to recreate with the fight. Even though the result was better than their wildest dreams, their relationship became so strained that after Raging Bull, Michael never filmed for Scorsese again. Martin Daly took the raw material to the editing room and worked on the draft. For the first time since Woodstock, he legally worked with Thelma Schoonmacher. In order to do this, he had to hire a whole team of Manhattan lawyers and pressure the guild. There's nothing you won't do for a film that you think will be your last. He even got advice from Thelma's future husband, 
director Michael Powell about how to film an aging and overweight LaMotta. In The Life and Death of Colonel Blim, Powell was able to add weight to his main character by changing the camera angle, changing his hairstyle, and stuffing his clothes. But let me tell you that in 40 years' time, you'll be an old gentleman too. Robert did not appreciate these ideas because they didn't fit with the realistic style of the film. De Niro suggested that he really gained the weight in real life. Bob loved realism on the screen, which was not good news for Joe Pesci. They literally hit each other with full strength while filming, and during a sparring session, Robert actually broke Joe's rib. The scene when this occurred made it into the final edit. So filming took a new turn for De Niro when he took a gastro tour of Italy and after two months, gained over 40 pounds. I'm tired of worrying about weight all the time. That's all I used to think about was weight, weight, weight. After a while, you know, you realize other things in life. His last stop was Rome, where on the 13th of September, Robert attended the wedding of Isabella Rossellini and Martin Scorsese. An exhausting two weeks of filming followed. The friendship between the director and the lead actor was strained. De Niro was exhausted by every take, and Scorsese was trying to finish the remaining scenes as quickly as possible. Hey, Jay, come on, Jay. Come on, wake up. Wake up, Jay. The relationship was hanging by a thread, but the desire to finish the film was their priority. Go get him, champ. The last take was followed by nine months of post-production. Even the sound effects recording was haunted by legend. It was said that after the sound was mixed, the editor destroyed all of the original cassettes. This was so that no one could use the team's work in another film. The studio bosses put out feelers for distributors, and the producers were busy fighting for Martin's complete creative freedom. Even the last quote from the Bible reflects his deep emotional struggle. On the 26th of May, Hag Moonigan died, Scorsese's friend and mentor. The last lines were dedicated to him, as was the entire film. The premiere of Raging Bull was on the 14th of November, 1980, and the rolling credits were greeted with a standing ovation. After the showing, Jake LaMotta asked his wife, was I really like that? Vicky answered, you were worse. Hey, do you like our work? Let us know with your like and comment. Push that subscribe button and share with your friends. If you want to support the project financially, become our sponsor on Patreon or YouTube sponsorship. Thank you.